breaking news with Petal World News. There seems to be some suspicious activity going on over at JHS Petal's headquarters. Daniel Danger has been spotted in Kansas City with Josh Scott. Nick, what do we have going on here? Yes, Belle. Earlier today, Daniel Danger arrived here in Kansas City, and he was seen with Josh Scott at the JHS headquarters unloading mysterious white boxes. As you can see, I am here in the Petal Museum, and Josh and Daniel are about ready to go live. What are in these boxes? Is there some kind of announcement that they're about ready to make? Um, we're very excited to hear what's going to happen. Is this just another he has the box scenario, or is something actually going on? Let's cut over to the live. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the JHS Show Live. I'm super excited today because, quite frankly, uh, we're about to dive into just a gut-wrenching mystery uh, that has just plagued myself and my friend Daniel here. Uh, Daniel, just take us into this. Uh, today's the day we're going to get to the bottom of this huge issue. Yeah. So, um, like, 1973, 74 through, like, 82, 83 is, like, the peak of the electroharmonics is like visual design language it's where typography started really congealing colors started really congealing kind of the way the pedals look finally started looking like a real full complete line versus before that where it gets very scattered and parts out and um so there's a lot of like really great consistency with you know the colors and in the inks and all that but there is one <laughs> major um inconsistency which makes zero sense to me is boggled me for years once you see it you cannot unsee it no i can't unsee right it. here's a good example like the red in big muff yeah the red in the hot tubes the red in the attack decay the red in the attack equalizer the red in the baseball the red in the small stone it's all the all same it's, it's all the same red the same it's red. like one ink that came out of a jar you know the blue in the lpb2 and just so if go? you're watching if they're screen printing yeah, uh, silk screening, yeah. and there's just literally paint in a jar. Yeah, there's and like we've these, seen this. Yeah, there's we've just enamel inks, enamel inks yeah. that are just you know in a big, big giant bucket. You know the blue's consistent, the yeah. bad stone and uh, yeah. where's the right small, there, stone? small stone? Small stone, same. They exact use the orange. same color, yeah. paint jar. However, when it came to greens, yeah, out the window. There's no so many greens. Let's just start putting them on yeah. here. Let's, let's start uh, making room. Let's let's, make room. let's get into the greens, cause yeah, you know it's a mess. Nobody's been brave enough to do this, but let's do it. Let's let's jump right in here. So I'm gonna divide them up. We have we'll call this the aqua green. So we have like uh, that's more of a forest though. We'll I call mean, it forest, whatever you want to call it. You're the so it's like designer. you know greens are they're either on the blue end of the spectrum or the yeah. yellow end of the spectrum. And that is, this green is yeah. more in, you know, this is like a, let's say. Well, three, Belle, unfortunately, two, it looks like Josh eight, and Daniel eight, eight, have chosen eight, a eight, rather eight, boring yeah. topic so to talk about. It looks like they are just yeah. going to be talking about different, different shades of green, green oh, ink yeah. today. Right. Um, yeah, I wish I hadn't drove well, that all the way up here so from floor. This color. Once again, Josh and Daniel that. are meticulously color, obsessing color, over small color, details that nobody cares black, about. And this That's right. I wish this room had like windows so I could throw myself out of one. Okay. It has a so it is the light. same green. It's the same ink. And this but is, even in that, the same green yeah. is a different green. Yeah, this is like, you know, what somewhere, do we have in, here? somewhere in this realm. I mean, Pantone's are tricky. It's probably, in reality, like this. 358 or like the... Well, now, while we're here, like, when you look at these old print, these are just, I just had these, I just kind of want to brag, yeah. but anyway. So, like, even like, what about this green? Every single Sovtech is a different green. Were they using, like, different metal every day? Like, I don't, is, blues, all the same, reds Russia, all the same. Did the Soviet Union have this Pantone? Chart. That's not even a Pantone. What is this? I don't oh. know. So it's like, like a, a, what's that? Like okay. Enamel. This just in. Mike Matthews, the like president why, of Petals like, yeah, himself, is preparing to make a statement. A well, oh, I'm actually glad that there's some real news happening in the world because I'm literally dying of boredom right now. All right, let's cut over to Mike Matthews. There's an interruption to announce the Lizard Queen, Rock and Roll.
Yeah. Hey guys, it's we real. Did it. It's real. The lizard queen is real. Daniel, it's real. It's real. It's real. It's real. Hit the stinger a bunch more. It's real. <clears throat> okay. If you're unaware of what's going on, a couple years ago, Daniel and I made this tribute. I would call it a love letter product. Absolutely. Love letter to Mike Matthews and Electro Harmonics. And um, it was this idea that we're going to time travel to 1975 and live action role play a Mr. Rogers craft product, yep. like experiment. And uh, lots of you, how many, like thousands. So of, many. So many people. So many said, people. Like so many comments. We want one. We want one. We want one. So here's the deal. We wanted it to happen, you wanted it to happen, and Mike wanted it to happen, so it's real. The Lizard Queen is a thing. Woo! There are it's two real. versions. Woo! Yes. It's real. It's real. There are two versions available right now. You can go to jhspedals.com, and you can go to electroharmonics.com. Uh, first up is the $100 version. Links so this are in is, the description, too. Link is in the description. This is 99 bucks. Daniel, show the box off. This is fine box here. Yeah. Lizard Queen. It's got JHS, Daniel Danger on the side. And then there is this limited version that is the big box. We revisited this whole idea. Um, and we made it time appropriately perfect. So this is as if it's 1975. You got the on and off switch. You don't need an LED. No LED. You don't need no an LED. No power jack. No power jack. This is limited to 1,000 pieces. Um, so, yeah, we need to jump into the little special surprise as well oh, right now. there's all kinds of surprises. There's all kinds of surprises. Let's talk about this for just a second more. So, there are 1,000 big boxes. There's a surprise, though, with 30 of them. We won't get to that just now. Um, the Nano... EH version, you can buy this everywhere. Musician's Friend leaked it early, so punish them for like today or something. Um, so this is the internals. I want to show you like how meticulous we got with this. Can we do top down? What would that look like? Yeah. This is, no, that camera's horrible. Let's do this. For, all right. So this is built Hello? just Hi. like an old school um, EH pedal. Actually, though, Daniel drew the trace art. It's true. I did. Yeah, we got together our head of engineering in this. NOS transistors that I've had in my house for stinking 12 years where I got them off this electronics order. So this is like NOS parts mixed with like new old school parts. Yeah, all, um, all the old boards used to yeah. be uh, like basically hand drawn and then like etched in a bath. And yeah. this, this is done in that style. Um, and if you look <laughs> at particular old... Uh, electro harmonics boards there is kind of a cool art to the circuit boards like it doesn't they don't look mm -hmm. anything like modern circuit boards and the first version of the liz queen there was a more traditional modern build and then we kind of sat back from it and we're like if we're gonna do this like let's do it a yeah. thousand percent right so. so inside and out it is really uh, i mean we approached it as a work of art one thousand big box pieces available now when they're gone they're gone um, you get a Mike Matthews. There's 8:30 left, actually. Okay, we're getting a count over here from Bell. But you get a Mike Matthews battery as well. Yep. Um, now here's the surprise, Daniel. Show them. EHX website is crashing. Already. EHX <laughs> website's crashed. It's okay though. Go buy them at Sweetwater. Go buy them at other great dealers. Your favorite dealer. Yep. EH. Everyone's an EHX dealer. So. So. So 30 of you will get. An incredibly collectible special version of this. That's the wrong one. But yes. Okay. Go ahead. So anyone who's like a nerd, electromonics nerd, knows about the in 80s inverse. Ones, yes. Where we don't quite know why these existed, but it's just they're inverse and they look super cool. Yep. So here's a memory man on my yep. board down here. It's like There's, blue and black. And so they just flip the colors. So we had to do that. Right? We had to. We had to. So... Um, oh, I'll just take this one. So we made inverses, some inverse ones, very limited. These were done actually slightly separate from the, the rest of the production on these. Um, so
Hello? We're okay. back. We're, we're back. back. Lizard we're Queen. Back. We're back. Okay. So if you buy a big box Lizard Queen one of these during this live stream, yep. uh, we are going to use a random number generator and we're going to pick 30 orders and they're going to get one of these. So 30 of you are going to have a chance at this chase version pedal. Yes. It's like collecting Pokemon. Yes. We got pictures of these being printed. Yes. Look at we this. Do. Look at so, this. This is amazing. These were done by a place called Westside Printing, or Westside uh, uh, Enclosures, I think, um, in uh, about five minutes down the road from where I live. Um, they did these very last minute. They kind of saved our butts a little bit. Um, but they are traditionally screen printed by hand with like very toxic enamel inks. They look unreal good. I mean, all of them look unreal good. We really yeah. we put a lot of time into making this look as, as dope and humanly possible. So yeah, we got 30 of these going to random people. You will not know until they the arrive. 550 left. Yes. So um, again, go to the uh, jhspedals.com. There's really good photography so you can like see just how super cool these are. So here are some rules. I want to go through some things. It's been really important to Daniel and I to combat the stupidity of scalpers. Um, and Daniel comes from an industry of print posters and collectible posters. Yeah. So I've been dealing with this 20 years. So. so we can't stop people from buying this and flipping it, but we can do a lot of things. So one thing we're doing to combat this is, number one, we made three times what we were originally going to make. Yep. The original conversation with Mike and all, we were going to make like 300, yep. literally. It and we were like, we have to make more because we want more people to have a chance. If that was the case, we'd already be sold out. Like yep. We would have just sold out under the old numbers. So there are 970 silvers, and there are 30 of the, the inverse that you just saw. Now, one per household. What we're doing is we're actually exporting into a spreadsheet, and we're doing our diligence to make sure no one's buying two. To, you know, we're, we're doing... I know what to look for. Yeah, we know what to look for. So please, I beg you into the camera, into your eyes. Don't be a bobo. Yeah. Don't make this not fun. People want it, want these to collect them, to have them. Don't go buy these to flip them. Don't be that person. Buy one and move on. Um, so the EHX, what's wonderful about this to help combat is this is unlimited, and it's 100 bucks. That's yep. like a cup, two cups of coffee. Yep. Yeah. So that's part of the combat. Um, and then I also, in this little bit of a moment here, and then we, we're going to jam, I do want to say... For those of you who are getting these, just to be really descriptive, we made these to the best of our ability the exact way EH would have made them. Probably a lot better in quality since from the 70s. Eh. Some of the 70s stuff, you know. But the thing that we did here, um, we it's screen printed. You have through hole parts on a board. You have You have a lot of things where there might be these if you pick up five of these units, you might notice like there's a little tiny thing in one of the colors and it's microscopic and it's like, is that a blim or something? No, it's just part of the process of making a vintage style pedal. We often joke that there are no mint electroharmonic yeah. pedals from the 70s, like even off the line. Yeah, it's just how it is. So that's a disclaimer of these are made in an old fashioned way. They're super clean and our quality control is we're very, very strict, but we're just giving that disclaimer to people who might really care about that. And then tolerances. So screen printing is a very imperfect medium yeah. by its nature. Like it that's part of like if you're expecting perfection in screen printing, you're going to be disappointed. Like yeah. these look great. I don't think none are going to leave this they're place that, that don't look good. But yeah, know. they're beautiful. Now this and this, I will shoot them out later. I have a switchback here and I'll show you. I'll demonstrate. I designed the circuit. They're identical in their circuitry but there are some different parts this big box uses new old stock really weird parts i found from an electronics hoarder like years ago i used the transistors to develop around develop the circuit for this and then eh took one of these and with me we kind of reversed and they used a more commonly commonplace transistor so they sound the same but there are differences in how like the octave knob might feel and how it gets to a place quicker or less quickly. 
This one might gate a little quicker than this, but they are the same. Like you're not going to be disappointed. Some of you will buy both and you should. So that's just a disclaimer about t the there's sirens here. Yeah. Crime. Uh -oh. Crime. There's uh that's just a disclaimer about the visual aspect and then the tolerance aspect of this. So what else we got? Oh, there we yeah. we, we missed something. What did we miss? Here. Also included because oh, yeah, I'm a yeah, I'm yeah. a graphic e designery person. Do it. Do it. Um we were like, well, let's if we're going to replicate a 1975 pedal, it should look straight out of 1975. Oh, yeah. So we made a full-on old-school style manual in all the correct fontage that explains how this thing runs. Um, we have 380 left. 380 left. There is a catalog Ooh. from 19 for the 1975 Winter Nam that advertises some pedals that. If you watch the original, don't currently episode. exist. Yeah, you, <laughs> you watch see it. we were playing with these yes. ideas. So these are a fun little catalog in here, and then uh, here's a little note, just a little note to you. Um, come back to that later. But then there's this guy. So yes. Josh and I talk extensively about how, because we're super nerds on this, how much we love finding old receipts in ephemera. Yeah, in pedals and boxes mm -hmm. because it always like it's always a music store that doesn't exist anymore. It's signed to someone who. You know, they're they're old. You get you learn a little thing. It's it's interesting to buy some really valuable pedal, and then inside is a receipt that says that it costs twenty nine dollars. Like that really cracks us up. So um, we actually made old school style carbon receipts for every single pedal. And I sat there. I have an entire giant box down here next to me. I signed and filled out every single one. So this helps combat. Yes, the scalping this is well. this is a combating scalping yeah. thing. Because what we're doing is we're actually filling the receipt out to the buyers. When you, we will literally have your name on your piece of ephemera for yes. your pedal. And then down here is your edition number, the little red thing on the bottom. So that's your edition number. Um, and so if you're going to flip it, I, we can't stop you, but your name is on it. And if you want to get rid of your name on it, you're throwing out the certificate of authenticity. So... This is this. If you're <laughs> if you're buying it to keep, awesome. You this is cool. If you're That's buying amazing. it to flip, you it's just you should read the store though. It's great. The store. The the top label. What you oh. created. So the music. We'll, we'll store. leave that to you. You leave it to them. We'll leave it okay. to them. It's a surprise. It's, you know, You'll have to discover. Yeah. So it. this is this. Old school style receipt, the little carbon paper thing. That's your certificate of authenticity on this thing. It'll be signed, and written by us. Um, I I was super fun to work on. <laughs> It's awesome. I think we're good yeah, on that. We should jam. Um, I think I think this is in line with what we're talking about. Yeah, we're already seeing some comments about three hundred and fifty being a little expensive. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so can you talk about why three hundred fifty dollars is not actually a bad price for this product? Yeah. Again, <laughs> the cost of a screen print enclosure and quantity, the the special circuit board, everything, matching here is transistors. Every bit of this is hand built in the, I hate the word, but like boutique. -y. I mean, this is an image here of just you know the population. These are these are built this way, and they cost this much because that's what it takes to build them. Like, again, no one's. I always joke on the show like nobody's buying a yacht from this. This is yeah. just like, in reality, what it costs to pull something like this off and make something. We've been working on this for two years. Two years. Yep. Yeah, we. We will get into the history of this project in a little bit. We have some fun clips to show you. Um, but yeah, it's a two year project. It's, yeah, it's just in the agreement with Electric Harmonics. Like, there's just an, there's just interesting dynamics there that that's the price it needed to be. I think it's fair because Look I mean, at we it. sold a one, a one knob germanium boost for a similarly near price and no one complained. And this is, this is a literal, like, Electro Harmonics hasn't made a big box pedal, a new one, in how long? Almost 20 years. So in tw this is the first big box. If you look, it says Electro Harmonics. This is actually built by JHS, but a real Electro Harmonics product. Um, we're going to service it and warranty it, but like this is a huge deal. And the amount yeah. of effort that went into pulling these collectibles off, the that's day, just the price. The day that I went back into the graphic files and removed faux Electro Harmonics and put in the actual logo, I was just like, it was like the end of... Um, the Grinch movie where like his like heart grew like that was what it was like for me. I was yeah. like, we did it. Like we actually stuck this landing. Yeah. This is it's like hard. I've loved this company for for twenty years. 
I, it's been uh, uh, literally something I think about every day. I don't, I couldn't explain to you why. I just love it that much. And for yeah. me to get my name a little bit on that history of this company and to get yeah. to like design this was awesome for me. Like I really, uh, tears for a, a cold looking person. Tone like, tears. Tone tears. I, it was thrilling. So this is $99. Like that's, that's the other answer. Yeah. Um, yeah, we did the best we could do with how we had to build it and still make some money. And then Electroharmonics has this unit, which is $99. And yeah, go yeah. buy this. This is it, literally as cheap as our 3 Series. Assuming like acting like this or assuming that this is like a, 90 left. a cash grab when it took us two years to do. Yeah, there's you know? no cash grabbing here. <laughs> no, nope. yeah. I've yet to see the cash to grab. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's jam. Let's jam. I think everybody wants to hear this pedal. So my signal path, I'm going to play. Here's the, uh, I'll, I'll do a demo. I'm going to play the uh, EH version right here. Okay, and then I have an old memory man on. So yeah, let's do it. Drums and bass start, and then I'll come in. Let's have some fun. So fun. I, I always want to play biker rock. Yeah, it's <coughs> I've never ridden a like a motorcycle, but I, I feel like I have. You, this thing transports you to the desert. It's hot. Yeah. You're you're filthy. You're just this is a filthy pedal. It's hot desert lizard tone. Yeah. And yeah. in case you're wondering, uh Daniel, you also had that on your bass just then, so it does work on yes. bass as well. Let's jump into like some history timeline. How many we got left? Two hundred and sixty. That's wow. great. So let's jump into the story. Now, if you, I'll let Nick and Daniel kind of cover yeah. this because Nick has a bunch of cool cues to show you. But I think it's just a cool thing to kind of remember that first episode. So if you've never seen the first episode, just go watch it. It is a Mr. Rogers craft project love letter to Electro Harmonics. We filmed it, and a year later, it was edited and aired. Yeah. And then once we filmed it, there were thousands of people, literally, I'm not exaggerating, saying, we want it. And then Mike was aware of that. I sent Mike a unit with a, a letter. And here we are. So y'all take it away. Show some cues and stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, what's really cool about this, and I think people don't always get the behind-the-scenes look, is the Lizard Queen started over, like, you and Daniel just Marcoing. We had never met. We used like, an app back and Marco forth. Polo. Yeah. yeah. Which is like a video uh, video text sort of Dick Tracy app. watch. Yeah, yeah. You guys are, like, always on your watches. I mean, all the way back, Daniel and I met. Through a book, we both worked. We were a part of a book called The Saltbox Book. Is that book here? I don't think I don't it's in the room. Know. But we kind of, I saw your collection, and then the guy was like, you got to meet Daniel. And then we connected over Instagram, and mm -hmm. this kind of just developed. Yeah. yeah. So I have, uh, I have like, a little clip of your guys, Marcos. So this is, like, from the birth of the idea to yeah. kind of where we're at. It's like video now. messaging is, of the, the actual moments we were yeah. Yeah. It's, this. it's like this is like March 2021. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then onward. Onward to today. Yeah. Build me the pedal called Lizard Queen. Totally, 100% yes to three super accurate as possible bootleg muffs. Though they will be in larger enclosures than the original, so. I legitimately think this looks pretty sharp. I mean, I got to clean up the top text and such but 
pretty good. I'm back at it. Me and old lizard queen. Uh, I was so tired last night. I giggled a little because I came down. This is... I'm usually really clean on a breadboard, and I don't like using these big, long jumper wires, but I was just like, just shredding it. There's like a cheese stick setting here. This is it. Volume. We got to name this control. I already talked to you about that. Somewhat final revision, I guess. Uh, with it says balance instead of gate or whatever, and I'll put the round logo on there instead of the squarey one. This is the Lizard Queen mechanical PCB. It was finished today by my uh, by my d main PCB design guy. There was a glorious era where the boards looked like this. So the upside of this weird mistake is that I was able to take another stab at it, and I think it does look better uh, generally. Uh, my daughter really wants a cheese stick, and she's yelling at me about a cheese stick. It worked! Dude, that's so cool. That looks so good. Uh, I'm so, I'm really glad we redid it too. I think it just looks better. There we go. So it'll just sit in like that, and uh, looks pretty snazzy. Here's the updated, newest version. Pantone. So there's a, just a solid like side-by-side -side comparison. I mean, just because I have one of these on hand. <laughs> I got the new nano samples in. They look good. Build me the pedal called Lizard Queen. Now it's looping. Yeah, I mean, it's, I haven't, I forgot about most of that's I mean, probably, so much that's of that. That's probably 1% of that conversation. Yeah, we, mean, we talk a lot on this app, but yo, so, from the idea, there were like these simmering versions of doing a tribute. But basically when it landed on Lizard Queen and this idea, not a big muff, but like some other design. Well, we were each going to do, we were each going to do a pedal as like an arts and crafts thing. Yeah. And then you were, you would originally, I think your joke was that you wanted your pedal to be called the small leg. Well, we were talking about the, the names of EH pedals don't make yeah. any sense. Yeah. Yeah. And we were, the whole point of this was I was coming up to meet you. Mm -hmm. And spend time in your archive. Yeah. And we were just going to film. And so this kind of was pushed right at the week before I came. We did all this in one week. Yeah. Essentially, everything you saw in the episode, designing the breadboard, you're doing the graphics. And Print, we crafted, printing them. crafted yeah. the project. It was one week, which is bonkers. Yeah. 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 That was nuts. And we've been wrangling every ever every other aspect of the production since pretty much yeah um and now it's real and in front of us and still wrapping my head around that so, yeah. one JHS, 200 left 200, 200 left, left. jhspedals.com grab this one or go buy the hundred dollar version it won't be autographed by mike mine's autograph whoa which is cool hundred dollars um and so it's also worth noting like at JHS, we're trying to make space for this idea. We've been doing things for a while, like JHS collectibles is what we internally call it. So like this image on the screen, we did like the Morning Glory throwback. We did the Germanium, the 250, like specialty kind of throwback things. This is the most amazing one yet. I mean, this is like a yeah. whole other level of crazy. This actually started before any of these you see for the most part. But yeah, JHS collectibles, the idea here is just simply to make some fun... Again, the keyword is fun, so don't ruin the fun by scalping, but just limited quality, collectible, special things. Because if everything's special, nothing's special. Yeah. That's the thought. Yeah. Making it, some whoa. fun, special it's things. It's worth noting in this that, like, what an absolute, like, joy and, like, good experience this was and how much we did this as like there are so many places we could have cut corners and yeah. like yeah. cheapened things and spent less time and none of this felt like work at all because i remember at some point we discussed some financial aspect of it and i was like i would have done it for free yeah okay. same um, daniel what's the name of this font <clears throat> uh the main one yes arnold bachlan arnold Bachlan. arnold bachlan ledger yeah. set um, maybe you're going to talk about this yeah, throw some at some other out. point, but can you, there's an EHX octave pedal sure. called the Octavio. 
can you tell us? The Octavio is part of the new Nano series, and it's essentially just a clone of a Roger Mayer Octavia ish thing. How is the Lizard Queen different from that? So, the, yeah, I'll the broad statement is there are classic Octavia octave fuzz circuits. There are there are probably four from the '60s. So you have the first ever octave fuzz is the Roger Mayer Octavia. That would have been around 1967, 68. And, you know, the story there goes, he was, he got it to Hendrix and Hendrix tracked with it. And because Hendrix used octave fuzz, a lot of people started wanting to make them. But the classic octave fuzzes that are always cloned, always cloned, whether it's a full tone pedal, whether it's like, just name a, a, an octave fuzz pedal. They're always going to be a clone of a tone machine. That's a Fox tone machine, an Ampeg scrambler, an Octavia. Uh, Fender Blender is another one. What is there? That's kind of it. That's pretty much. And everything is some version of that thing. This, when I went to the breadboard, I tried to purposely not do any of that. And so the way that it folds the waveform, it it's not an Octavia. It's not a tone machine, but it is an Octafuzz. But it is quite different. It'll do those sounds. Um, you can remove the octave essentially by turning the octave knob down. I thought it was interesting that it has an octave knob. That's something that's not very common. Like you can blend in the octave. Mm. Um, so all that said, the Octavia is fine. Uh, EH had the octave multiplexer later. That's, yeah, that's octave down. Octave down, which is a whole other thing. But it's it's unique. So it is a unique circuit. Yeah, mm. like a lot of fuzz pedals have they kind of have one good sound in them. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about this is that like the shadow, uh, the shadow, the sun knob, the balance knob and the octave knob, mm -hmm. they're really interactive. Yep. And like, if you put the balance knob all the way to shadow and the octave all the way down, it is like, it's a thick, chunky kind of wooly muff sound. And then in yeah. the middle somewhere, it's like a little more fuzz facey. Yeah. And then all the way up, it's like much more super fuzzy. Like there is a much more yeah. varied sound that kind of comes out of this. And to be, Double clear, because I know how forums work. It's not a big muff. There's not a big muff circuit in it. But it will do some of that, mm -hmm. like, wooly thing. Yeah. Any other good questions? Where should you place it in your uh, I always say first, first. But just play with it. It's, it's a vintage-style transistor-based circuit that has a lot of needs. Mm. It's needy, like yeah. Pro Tools. So yeah. you want to be very careful. Gentle. It, it can yeah. be very loud, too. <laughs> Yeah, it can be super yeah. loud. So let me demonstrate. Let's get another count here while I demonstrate. But this is... 150. 150, 150. left. Ooh. This is the big box unit. If we go down, maybe remove that. Um, yeah. So I'm going to show you octave off. So this is octave off, and the gain is essentially fixed. So it doesn't have a fuzz or distortion control. I lean more towards it being called a distortion. EH engineers did as well. So it is the octave distortion. So this is... Like a big muff, certain big muffs will kind of land in this. Yeah, turning the sh down to shadow. Turn that balance to sun. I should note that um, when... It's, it applies with the octave. Yeah, yeah, so it's like if we do that sweep with... Yeah, the balance control is dependent on the octave. Yeah, and this place. is like less, like more wide open. This is more gated. So like a full... You know, if you go to your 12th fret with an octave fuzz, that's where you start. That's like incredibly Ibanez standard fuzz, which is yeah. a super fuzz. Or also K one of our favorite all pedals of all time. Yeah. K fuzz. These K fuzz is a modified super fuzz. I forgot super fuzz in my list of that's the greatest octave fuzz. But again, not the circuit's not really similar to any of those. A lot of dissonance, like if you. That's 
That's a cool sound. So all the way shadow left and then the octave up. So I'll switch over to the EH version. Now we're on the EH version. A thousand people just said this this sounded better because this was quieter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I would say overall the 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 nano is the more consistent production because these old parts. Like if you were to line up. 20 nanos and 20 of these you'll find that the nanos will be more perfect because they're using the newer transistors and these are kind of like doing it the best we can they're all very good if you lined up and you could speak to this 10 rams head muffs yeah. i mean even part of good luck even part of making these was the fact that like we wanted some of the inconsistency we wanted some of the imperfection that existed yeah. in these in these units like that's just the charm of them yeah i'll play with this a second and then... So when you go sun all the way up, octave all the way up. That's just like, just greasy. Nasty. That's like one of my favorite things that fuzzes do where mm -hmm. they, they just, they can't handle it anymore. Yeah. And it turns into like this weird tremolo, like it just can't handle. I call anything. it clank. Yeah. Yeah. So let's do same settings just so people can. We'll do noon, 120. 120 left. Good job, y'all. Here they are, same settings. Yeah, and it's going to depend on. They're pretty darn close. So you can hear a little difference there. There's a little bit more of a um, banshee, like yeah. I'm like a dying that, hyena vibe. That, that classic shrill. Yeah. <laughs> but it, but it's here. I mean, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. You just gotta mess. You gotta twiddle the knobs. Yeah, yeah. I think like one thing to pe for people watching too is just like, it, <clears throat> like you said, pot tolerances. Yeah. Every pedal's a little bit different, and it's like it's not that they sound different. The sounds are there. Yeah, they're just you gotta kind of find them uh, in a little bit of a different way. And I'm I'm really like EH engineers. They did a killer yeah. job. Like they sent multiple revisions. Were very picky. Um, I have several protos, you know, they just kept chipping away at getting it perfect. And then we would get those revisions. We would analyze them. We'd make it, it was just a team effort, but really their engineers, they're phenomenal. I mean, so they did a really good job. I hear there's like a pedal world news clip. Oh yeah. We're going to take a quick break. Um, you know, just get some snacks or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll be right back. with Pedal World News. I I can't believe it, you guys. From a dream to a reality, these these sweet boys did it. The Lizard Queen is out. That's right, Belle. I'm standing here with two actual Lizard Queen units. It no longer says faux electro harmonics. It says electro harmonics. Uh, these big box versions are being made right here in the JHS facility. And you can see here, these smaller ones, are going to be made at the Electro Harmonics facility, and just this is incredible. This is incredible. I've got the box. <laughs> it's pretty pretty cool. Uh, these uh, big box units are limited to one thousand, um, so you better pick those up quick before they're all gone. I know I'm going to probably steal this one <laughs> before I leave. Um, I might actually steal both of these, but yeah, you can see here on the box it says uh, Daniel Danger and JHS Pedals. This is a real. Real, real match made in heaven, if I do say so myself. Uh, just, just, a, just an incredible historical day. So anyway, so I'm, I am glad. I'm glad I drove up here from Florida. Thank you, Nick, and huge congratulations <clears throat> to Josh, Daniel, and all the lovely folks over at JHS Pedals and Electro Harmonics. Um, it's a little weird how the news anchors look like you guys. 
Are they I related? Don't, I don't think they look. No? No. That's I, I do want to mention, weird. for those of you who have hung around, you're the faithful. We're giving away 10 of these. So, yes. Belle and Joshua, you want to take this over and let's just give them away right now? <laughs> you know I do. Right. Um, I already have some people that I picked. Yeah. If um, you're watching it this far Did you in, pick them based on positive vibes? <laughs> yeah, I actually did. Great. Positive vibes. Um, I'm writing another one Ten down. Ten of them. Yep. Ten brand new positive okay. people. Um, keep, just keep, yeah. people, just keep putting your names in the We're chat. And yep. I'm going to pick queen. people. Yep. All hail the lizard queen. Who else? Who else? Who else? Um, I like going. that name. I like that name because it's easy. What's our count at, Bell? We got 100 units left. That's great. 100. I do want to mention to those people out there, you all know the weather, but you know, you the Lizard Queen's really helping me get, yeah, back. get yeah. the meat sweats. I have yeah. some kind of meat sweats. Oh boy, Gross. that's the worst. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's yeah. terrible. I've never seen those nukes casters in my life. I know. They, they, they seem really weird. loud and obnoxious. Yeah, I, kind of I didn't like their energy. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. Yeah. So how about while they, while they, meaning him, gathers the giveaways, talk about your uh, special projects. Oh, yeah. You're, you this, have special things. I have special projects. What do you want to talk about first? For, yeah. Wait, are we oh. going to talk about? I think, you know, the shirts. <gasps> okay, the shirts. So, right. oh, we yes, have right. shirts, print, book. I so, just need one name left, so you guys yeah. just keep chatting. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Take it so, over. So um, in celebration of all things electroharmonics, as we do, uh, Mike has graciously allowed us to make some cool um he's so tnb cool. style uh, electro it. harmonics merchandise for some things that just shirts that don't exist that i thought would exist i thought should exist um so we have uh some shirts based on oop that's the back let's go to the front so we have like mm. these are based on scans and kind of constructions made from particular like destroyed boxes that i have that i just really like i like you know, like I said, screen printing is a really imperfect medium, and like that leads to bleeding and scronkiness. So we got a big muff box shirt. Scronkiness. We got okay. a big muff shirt. Um, these are like screen printed on really nice shirts. Like a, I have like a trashed Electric Mistress box. Uh, kind of scan that, put that together. So Electric Mistress, Electric Mistress. Um, there's a Lizard Queen box that's signed by Mike there. Um, and then there's a shirt based mm. on the circuit design. Uh, yeah. And then, I, but that I put so a good. I put a lizard in there. Um, so the the box shirts, if you go back to the front one, the box shirts all the way back. Um, on the back of each of those is a design based on a box that we found. We visited Electro Harmonics' <laughs> deep darkest basements, and we found some boxes that we'd never I, seen. No box. one had ever seen before, basically. And this logo was on the box, and I had never quite seen it before. Um, and it's just awesome. It's just really simple. It's just like their classic design, but just like executed yeah. in this really Based cool way. Based on this. Yeah. Which we saw this and we're like, what is this? Yeah, I'd never seen those boxes before. We had no idea what the product even was. It was literally just a palette of these, yeah. this product in the basement yeah. that we'll get into a little bit later. So that's on the back. And then rock and roll, you know, the, the classic Mike line on the back. Um, so we've got a couple of shirts. Those are going to be timed, like a time sale through the week. Yep. Um, and then additionally... Uh, as some people know and some people don't, my what I do and then what I've done for the last twenty years is I make uh, illustrated screen printed gig posters for a lot of a lot of larger bands, like the Beatles. Not like the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's your it's your Foo Fighters and your Primuses yeah, yeah. and your your yeah. whoever's. Um, so I make big elaborate screen prints. I'm an illustrator uh, professionally, so I made a screen print um, to celebrate the launch of Lizard Queen. It is a twelve by twelve, a twelve and a half by twelve and a half, um, three color screen print. On, so it's like an LP size. Yeah, it's it's meant to fit in a record frame, so you That's can cool. just buy a record frame. And it's printed on ra metallic rainbow foil, so the petals yes. like shine out. Yes. So that's the that's the the titular lyric um, lizard queen coming out of her uh, her jungle fortress, I guess. Sure. Yeah, um, it's a jungle fortress. And so those are the same thing, like timed edition through the week. Uh, if you want one, it's there. I, I, I made it as cheap as I could possibly make it because let's just have fun with this. Um, those are actually screen printed at my shop. Um, we're doing those. Um, and uh, they'll, you know, they'll ship when the shirts ship. Uh, so those are the fun things that we made. So if, if you bought a pedal, great. Buy some cool stuff. If you didn't buy a pedal, but you want to have fun with this, 
there's some cool stuff. If you like lizards a whole lot and you want to yeah. just set your wardrobe for the year, go nuts. Where can people get a hold of this stuff? That is in the uh, there's the a link JHS. in the description. Yes. Yeah. Sweet link in the video description. J H S X D D. Um, there's I will, eighty left. On the site. I will put eighty left links in this in the chat too. Um, yep. A note on that: a bunch of you were already trying to get T-shirts from the website, and you needed a password. That should not be the case anymore. The website is open to purchase okay. T-shirts. Um, we Lovely. used we're using really nice well, same thing. It's like we made them as cheap as we could. Those those shirts are really nice shirts. They're all like this is not um, direct to garment printing, which is the scourge of modern T-shirts. These are all like fully properly screen printed. They will last forever. That so, Big Muff T might be the coolest. Yeah, it's so cool. coolest. It's my I've favorite box. It's like all so the boxes cool. in my collection. That's the one so that like cool. I just warms my heart for whatever reason. I, I think, think this is a good segue to like. From the moment we we first started talking, um, we started talking about a book project. A book project. Want to get yes. into that a little bit? Yes. Let people in on it. Because you and I are going to be at the Dallas Guitar Show. It's true. And we're going to have a special little totally normal behavior booth. We're going to have a booth there. Yeah. That's but go fun. ahead. Tell people what we're up to. So um, I, I have this massive lecture harmonics collection. I have this massive lecture harmonics archive of just information, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I've always, for years wanted to do a book that was like the complete visual history of this company because you know it's even at the time this was you know 15 12 15 years ago when i was kind of starting this this idea um i thought the story was interesting like just i what i knew at the time i thought this story was interesting and uh, a certain incident happened a couple of years ago after josh and i after i met through the stomp box book mm -hmm. Um, where we had the opportunity to meet uh, Bob Meyer, who was the designer of the original Big Muff Circuit. We and thought he was dead. Everyone thought he was dead. I mean, there's we literally yeah. found an obituary for him. We did the musical, Pedals yeah. the Musical, if you haven't watched it, it's the greatest theatrical thing ever to be done in it's guitar true. pedals. Uh, for now. And Nick was Bob Meyer, and I was Mac Matthews in a scene. Yeah. And Bob's nephew, I believe, called. Mm -hmm. He's like, hey, that's, that's Bob. Come see him. And we're like... Yeah, and this all <laughs> happened right as we were goofing. This is with this, this stuff. was we were, you were already coming out to do the Lizard Queen video and the other Electronics yeah. video, and we had this opportunity to go meet him. So we drove down to uh, rural New Jersey and met him. Um, we interviewed him, and what was crazy about it is that somewhere when we were talking with him, he said like, "Oh, like my workshop's still here," and we're like, "Your workshop?" And he's like, "He's had the same workshop since Electroharmonics started." Sixty years, yeah. of the same workshop. This is this is a house that, if I understand correctly, Mike Matthews bought him when he joined the company. So the the workshops that are on the property are the buildings that the company was started in. Like all the so much of the, the, the original design, design work, work design right. work and everything was in this building, and the thing about it was that it was completely untouched. It was like a Twilight Zone thing. It was insane, and he yeah. just casually mentions like, yeah. "Yeah, I got some prototypes, I got some, so come on in." And we go in there, and my brain immediately starts melting because I'm literally seeing things that no one's ever seen before. Um, I'm finding, and it's it's worth noting that the his garage had been in a, like a four foot deep flood mm -hmm. some number of years ago, so everything was covered in black mold. <laughs> um, yes, but the shop was just floor to ceiling electroharmonics history um and i have a lot of stuff like i already had a lot of stuff and then the amount of things that we found in this space that day <clears throat> it like once again my brain was melting the things that i was finding i mean that's where i found the first yeah. ever big muff enclosure because to work through timelines and history which you and i are trying to do and we have a couple other friends like there's a small community who are trying to thread together yeah the past it's hard and when you can walk into this and go holy crap there's like documents hanging yeah. on the doors there's like the workbench yeah you can start getting years right and things as i was leaving um i mean we just we we asked bob's permission we said can we can we go through here can we dig uh, you know he's he's in his 90s he doesn't really go in there anymore he's spry, though yeah he is uh, he doesn't really go in there anymore. And I was like, this is really important to me. This is important to us. This is what we want to do. We, we've had this book idea forever. We're the people to do it. Uh, can we dig? Can we start pulling things out of here? And we spent basically a day and a half just emptying this place and f finding the most incredible relics. And at one point, I like as yeah, I was photographing leaving, stuff, yeah. photographing stuff, interviewing him, asking him about things that we were finding. I found a couple file folders and 
like found unbelievable documents. Um, so we just, we, I remember I, I went up to him and I found, I had found a couple things that were unbelievable relics, like rock and roll hall of fame level needs yeah. to be preserved, needs to be, you know, researched. And I said, we have to do the book now. Like we, yeah. we have to, like, this is our obligation as pedal nerds. Like no one, if we don't do it, no one's going to do it right. Um, so we kind of did a little in the moment there. And we've been working on that pretty consistently since. And that was two years ago. Yeah, I had started. I wasn't thinking about a book, but I'm I'm always interviewing inventors. So I had interviewed Mike. I'd interviewed Howard Davis, and so I had some work done. And then I met you and saw your archive, and I was like, "Holy crap!" Like, and then those pieces just fell together. We met mm -hmm. Bob. We've since interviewed Julia Tretis. We've there's just a host of characters, and the electroharmonic story is so interesting. It's so much weirder than you think and it it's is. it's so much bigger than even Mike. Mike's amazing. He's, like, yeah. larger than life. But yeah. the story of all these talented people is so amazing. And so we're just working diligently on that. Yeah. A, a big aspect of the, the project and our approach to it is that, like, you know, Mike is this amazing facilitator of people's great ideas. He is. And his his superpower was that he could find the best of the best. I mean, the reason he got Bob Meyer was because someone told him, he's the best, you have to get him. Yeah. And Mike was just like, I'm going to do whatever it takes so you're in my company. I want the smartest people. And the, the <clears throat> people who are involved in this company and what those people went on to do after they left Electromonics, like literally changed technology in the, across yeah. the world. Like every single person... It's the threads are insane, so we really wanted to make this book that like not only shows everything the company ever did, everything they were ever involved with, including things that you have will like will melt your brain as to like I can't believe they did that. It's also a big part is we want to show all the people behind the scenes, all these amazing designers and creatives yeah. who participated in building this amazing company and telling their stories too. Um, and once again, yeah. We're going to drop a website about the book. And one of our things right now that we're looking for, and if you're in Dallas or near driving distance to Dallas, May 6th and 7th, I think. I don't, yeah. Yeah, we're going to be there. And we're looking for people like you, just normal guitar players who have a story about electroharmonics. What was it like to buy a pedal in the 70s? What was it like to, what did you see? What did you experience? So yeah. we're actually going to have a little audio recording rig, and we're just going to be capturing like real people stories. There will be a website that we'll toss around on our socials yeah. and stuff. Yeah. If you're, um, you know, we could fill the book and just have it like, here's a bunch of pictures of famous musicians. Here's Santana. Here's Hendrix, et cetera. It's not but that like, interesting. It's, yeah. yeah. The idea, I mean, this is a company that was kind of the people's pedal. Um, and we want to make sure the book has photos of real people using these things in real life. So if like, if you were in a band in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and you used electroharmonics, and you got photos of you using them on stages, show us, et cetera, et cetera. Like, if you got a stories, if you ran a, if you had a music store, yeah. you did conventions, if you did guitar shows, if you had any interaction with anyone involved in this company that like you think should be in a book, let us know, because yeah. we want to make sure the book is like 50% that stuff. So a little bit of a, a gentle reminder, let's give away these 10 pedals, but we are scrubbing orders currently, and we have found some Bobos. Don't be a Bobo. We're deleting your orders immediately if you're buying more than one. Uh, Steve's already caught quite a few people, so don't do that. Don't be that person. Yeah, don't be a we're Bobo. We're having fun. Yeah, we're it's having fun. fun. This is supposed to be fun. This is not so you can go flip stuff and be annoying. Um, I also want to give a shout-out. We have a group of builders at JHS yeah. that refer to themselves as the Lizard Kingdom. So here's a picture. Yeah. These are the cats that built these. Um, Tanner has been the head of the project. So yeah. I handed this over to Tanner pretty early, and he built 800 of these alone, yeah. which is like he did it over a long... Addison knows all... Ooh. Addison built the 250s, so yes. he remembers. But there's a group called uh, the Lizard Kingdom. It's a few guys, and they, they, have they a just like... Down there. They owned it, yeah. This is Dustin. Dustin... Yep. And Sean. And Sean. Yep. So these are the lizard masters of the lizard kingdom, and they shall forever be remembered. Ooh, yes. Look at that smile. Look I that. just want to I want to shout out Tanner's smile. Every time yeah. I see that picture, it makes me smile. Shout out. Anything you want to say about the lizard kingdom, Val? I mean, you work, you work pretty closely with them. All hail the lizard kingdom. <laughs> They're really special, special boys. We love them here. They just get it done. Lizard this release boys. is... 
a, a release like this is a lot more work for our production crew. We have a very like clean, streamlined way that we build pedals. But for something like this, when we're hand populating every single component and the packaging is different and just they take up different amount of space on the shelves. They like take up a lot of space. <laughs> every single person in production has worked so hard to make this release happen. So thank you guys. Let's let's give away 10 normal nano lizard queens. What's our count? How many do we have left? Just a few of the big boxes. 66. 66. So scrubbing them a little bit. We're getting a few back. So yep. if you want one of these, you know, the clock is definitely the batteries running out on you, whatever the saying yeah. is. So and we're not afraid to keep them for ourselves. On yeah, <laughs> we're, we'll keep them before we let someone have like three of them. So Joshua, back. give away ten of these. Am I okay sitting back? I felt you like can lean back, back in. Yeah, yeah. This is a living room casual encounter. This is what my living room looks like at home. Actually, that's weird. It's kind of freaky. Yeah. Um, winner number one. Okay, chat. I'm not picking anyone else, so. You, yeah. need, you just need to stop. And you're winning an Electro Harmonics Nano version, which is amazing. They're a hundred dollar value, so we're giving away a thousand dollars worth of these. To reiterate, it's the same circuit. Yes. So you're not losing out other than the fact it's, it's not. It's actually a style. little more it's a lot more pedal board friendly. And Much more pedal board yeah, friendly. So well, oh, I'll <laughs> back. Okay. Though I will say just throwing this out there, um, this is this pedal. The two between the two are going to really cause issues in the top jacks versus side jacks argument because it's both. Oh yeah, yeah. Side there's, jacks, there's no good side jacks. I don't know if we said jacks. also the big box doesn't have a power. It doesn't. We did. did it's we? as if okay. it's 1975. So yeah, I believe yeah. you told me when we were. I, I remember because going through the Marcos. I think you told me that like the draw on this is like you could leave a battery in there for like three it, years. Yeah, it barely uses <laughs> any current. Okay, winners. Uh, winner number one. Esther M. Gonzalez. Winner number two, Orthodox Review. Winner number three, Liam, L I A M. Uh, winner number four, Mackenzie Newman. Winner number five, Courier 11 Seconds. That's Courier 11 S E C. Uh, winner number six, Doug Garrett. Number winner number seven, Ethan Torres. Uh, winner number eight, Jeremy Clare. <laughs> winner number nine, Juan. And winner number ten is simply because I liked your name, uh, Wailing Raven. Nice. Wow. So if you are Esther M. Gonzalez, Orthodox Review, Liam, Mackenzie Newman, Courier, 11 Seconds, Doug Gary, Ethan Torres, Jeremy Clare, Juan, or Wailing Raven, please email me at the JHS show at jhspedals.com. Send me your shipping address and take it away, Nick. If you're not those people, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Well, whoo. There's really nothing left. I mean, we did it. We it's did out. It. It's in the wild. There's a few left. Um, grab them while they're here. The nanos are... Uh, I believe the nanos ship today or tomorrow to dealers. So you'll have these pedals. Ours, ours are totally built and ready to ship individually starting today. Some of them probably. Mm -hmm. So you'll be getting your pedals beginning of next week. So everything's out there. You're not having to wait. Um I have nothing else to say other than please. like this is a huge honor. It's yeah. really please, amazing. Please, when you get these, yeah, please make a video of yourself opening up your Lizard Queen, because we want to see the people who got of this you. inverse. Thirty version. of you will get this, and literally we, one of thirty inverse. We don't know who those people are, and we want to know. We want to see everybody opening up their Lizard Queens. Please make a video. Tag us in your stories on Instagram. Tag us at JHS Pedals so it. we can see you opening them. Ugh, it's amazing. So yes. Please do that. 30 of you get an inverse. It's randomly. It's very Willy Wonka. Um, 970 of you will get this amazing silver one. And then there are thousands and thousands of the $99 Special, ones. Special, lovely thing. Yeah. Uh, on my end, I want to thank all you guys 
and ladies and everyone here for making this crazy dream of mine come true. It's like, I even say that, like, that's a, that's a weird thing because I say this is a dream of mine. This was not a dream of mine because I never thought that anything like this could happen. It, there was no reason for me to think it could happen. It was just, an, it was a, was a non-thought. And then when it became into existence, I was like, okay. And then off we went and it's absurd. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is absurd. I feel like, I don't know. I, it just it doesn't make sense to me, and I'm still wrapping my head around it. But I owe a, a huge uh, gratitude to everyone in this room, everyone in this building, everyone at Electro Harmonics, everyone who's buying it now, because um, there is a Electro Harmonics product. I mean, this once again, this is the first big box new big box unit in like 20 years, 20 years yeah. and that's you know something that a lot of people talk about really wanting to come back. You know, this is a pedal I got to design having spent years obsessing over the looks of these things and the aesthetics. I got to make something that was like, you know, special to me and my own. You know, the, the box has my name on it. Like I get to go to a music it's store super, and see a my bo a box with my name on it. Like it's super I've just, cool. I've only played in like crappy punk bands. Like this doesn't make any sense. Like why is this happening? Like it's it's not a dream. It's just like this like gift from above and um i'm just yeah. endlessly grateful that i got to be a part of this um i don't want to like tear up but like this is important to me like i really cannot express like yeah there's a there was a book about star trek um the original series and how it was a thing for uh science fiction authors it was such a big deal if they got to write a star trek script and like this is mine like that's crazy to me yeah. you know like that's, that's cool, cool. Woo! Well, dude, yeah thank you for your creativity and uh, endless ideas on this like yeah. kind of i mean honestly spearheading it pushing it forward and it's amazing it's super cool i think we need to do like one final jam out jam out and then we're gonna we're gonna peace out we're gonna peace out yeah yeah you need some jimmy jones all right last count there was like 60 something so we're gonna go off the air there's a handful left um Thank you to everyone who's purchasing these, and I second everything that Daniel said. For me, I love collaboration. Um, we talk at JHS a lot internally, or at least I do. Maybe they listen to me, but uh, collaboration is the best creativity, and so it's been awesome working with you, Daniel. And then with Electro Harmonics, to be able to collaborate with just a yeah. legendary company. I mean, we got to do the Boss collab and to do this one. This is, in a lot of ways, it feels a little more special because of becoming friends with Mike over the last five, six years. There was no reason he had to say yes to this. Mike he did, did not have to do this. No. And um, it's he's such a sweet dude. And yeah. He saw, a, how, he saw how much we cared. And yeah. he like was like, I think the door he couldn't for us. ignore us because yeah. we were like little babies <laughs> obsessing. <laughs> All right. Let's just, uh, let's just jam. I don't know. You're going to play a mini synthesizer? Mute your mics. Daniel, you should hold that up and explain what you're doing. The little micro synth. All right. Take it away, Addison. Tell me what key. Let's go uh, key of E. Why not? Twenty pedals left. Twenty left.
15 left. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.